Welcome back. This is video number six in Email Dominator's Quick Start video series. My name is Tom Mag. Now in the last video we went through in detail the query page for consumer opt-in email. In this video we're going to cover the consumer postal and phone code data, cell phone data, car and truck data, boat and yacht data, motorcycle data, and U.S. voters database. And our purpose here is to identify our perfect customer and find new opportunities to market to people based on their demographics, to, based on what we know about them, so that we can quickly build that know, like, and trust relationship with our prospect by giving them an appropriate message at an appropriate time. So let's jump into the consumer, postal, and phone number data. Now within this data set, there's about 220 million data records and there's 216 different demographic choices so you can really drill down and find your perfect customer within this data. I'm going to skip through most of the geo-targeting uh, options since you know, we did that in the last video. It's video number five covers geo-targeting by state and city and county, uh, zip codes, uh, SCF lookup, you know, zip code radius, uh, this is the, the domain, the email domain search that we saw the last time. And from here down, we're going to get into the specifics of the demographics. Now, you've got a whole lot of different unique choices here for what you require to be unique within your data that you pull. So if you require a unique email address, you can click here. If you require a unique postal address, you can click here. A unique phone number. If you require a valid phone number, which is a properly formatted phone number, or valid email address, properly formatted email address, you, you would click those. Now, if you're looking for a valid phone number without a do not call flag, you could click here, or with the do not call flag. Now, th this does not replace uh, your obligation to run phone numbers through the do not call list if you're doing phone calls. Uh, this is just a pre screen flag that's provided for you. Okay, the next section is searches by area code and exchange, and we covered that already. Uh, searches by age or date of birth. Now, now most of this data contains age and date of birth, so it's, uh, it's really good if you want to dig down deep into that. Let me just explain to you quickly how the rest of this works. Most of these queries are going to have two options in them that are going to say all must match or any must match. Now, if, if you select all must match, each of the criteria you select must be present for that data record to be included. Or if you select any can match, any of those criteria can be available and the data record will match. So there's, there's an explanation of that here if you'd like to read it and need further explanation. So you can go through and read each of these criteria and there's, there's a drop down. If you, if you click, it'll open up all different kinds of menus. So the type of business owned, now this would be for, for business owners. So you can look for self-employed people. Okay, very interesting. Depending on what you're marketing, uh, if you want to market by specific types of businesses. So this would be occupational titles. So if you want to market to bartenders or to coaches or to drivers or draftsmen or electricians. All the different occupations are listed here. And you again, you can select all or any. Now if you were to select all, they would have to be the vice president and a volunteer and a waiter for your data to be, to be collected if you selected those three. Or any, it could be a vice president or a volunteer or a waiter waitress. See how that works. So you would select any must match or all must match, uh, whichever is appropriate for you. So we'll continue on languages. Interesting people, what languages they speak. Here's ethnicities, a broader scope of ethnicities, ethnic groups, uh, religions. This one is good. Children or adults present in a household by age range. So you can select age of young people or age of older people that are in the house, depending on what you're marketing. That's very valuable. Estimated household income, estimated net worth, estimated credit rating, the type of property, whether it's a single family, multifamily, whether the property is owned or rented. Now, this is actually owned or rented. And then here's the postal designation for whether it's an apartment or a single family dwelling or a post office box. And there's your postal designations. You know, how long they've been at the current residence. Estimated home market value. Here's, here's the low side and high side, so you can select a range. And this just goes on and on. How many generations live in the household? The number of adults, uh, males and females, whether they're tobacco smokers or not. Very interesting demographics for targeting your product. You know, if you're targeting, if you're marketing the new 
uh, electronic cigarettes target tobacco users and smokers. Interesting, isn't it? Interest groups, here's, here's all your primary and secondary interest groups that we discussed in the last video. Bank and credit cards, whether, you know, Discover Card, Visa, a MasterCard. Interests and activities, you know, tennis, snow skiing, NASCAR, scuba, hunting, flying. How about targeting pilots? You know, that's an affluent market right there. Spectator sports, football, basketball, soccer, etc. and so forth. Collectors. You know, coin collectors, antique collectors, military memorabilia collectors, home and garden, home plants, gardening, woodworking, crafts, home improvements. Boy, you can use these to really drill down and find your perfect prospect. Are you starting to get ideas? Uh, are you starting to get marketing ideas on how you can target market your products to the right audience? I hope so. Well, just like the other queries that we've done, and check your record count and then download those records. Now I'm going to scoot back up to the top. We're going to jump past business to business data. We'll cover that in the next video all by itself. And let's look at cell phone data. Now cell phone data is very interesting and I hear this all the time. They'll tell me, oh, cell phone data doesn't, it doesn't really exist. You can't buy cell phone numbers with names and addresses an email address. It just doesn't exist. Well, they're wrong because it does exist and there's about 250 million consumers with their cell phone numbers and their names and their addresses right here in this database. Now this data would be important to you if you were doing a text message marketing campaign and you wanted to get targeted phone numbers to send your text messages to. So this is very niche, very specific data for a particular type of marketer that's, that has the ability to use this kind of data. This is not typical email marketing data. There's just about 250 million phone numbers with names and addresses in here, but there's also an email address that goes to the text. There's a texting email address and it's included in this data. So you can use email marketing to email a text message if you are interested in marketing that way or, or straight up you know, text message marketing. So th this is very advanced and I'll run through it quick. The demographics for geography are all the same as they were in video number five for the opt-in email marketing list. So I'm going to skip past all of that. So you have some of the personal demographics in here and then you can choose your cell phone numbers by carrier. So more often than that, you're going to be selecting a city name or a geographic area that you're going to target with your text message marketing. There's a whole lot of data here. Feel free to play with this and download some sample data. Let's move on now to car and truck data. Now, using car and truck data, you can get some very precise targeting on, on the type of customer uh, that you're looking for. Now, the geographic targeting, it, it's all the same. So you're familiar with this already. I'm going to scoot past all of this and get down here into choosing the make and model of a car. So let's just play with this. You can choose a specific year or you can choose a range of years choose a specific make. So let's go here and let's, let's look at Porsche owners and we'll take all models. Now the VIN numbers are all included in the record but we don't need to ignore any because they have or don't have a VIN number. We're going to take all the data. Uh, we can select the type of fuel that a vehicle would have. Compressed natural gases. I guess that's uh, propane, right? Uh, we can select whether a vehicle was new or used. Uh, we can select whether or not the vehicle has a lien on it. That's interesting. Uh, we can say we must have an email address or without an email address or either and we're going to do some email marketing so we want to say we must have an email address. So we can choose income ranges and I'm going to skip that because based on the make of the car we, we know that this is an affluent uh, market already. We can choose an age range but we want to just look at those men having a midlife crisis or women owners of Porsches. So any targeting options that you can think of are available to you right here. Uh, so we'll go down a little further. We can do it. We can do a name search, you know, within this. We've got cell phone number carriers. If we wanted to limit our search to cell phone number carriers, we could do that as well. And I'm going to do a record count quick. Let's see how much data is available for Porsche owners with email addresses in the United States. Wow, look at all that data. Okay, so in the United States, and all the U.S., I've got 50,877 Porsche owners with a valid email address. Boy, you think that's target marketing data for an affluent product? Absolutely. And you can play with these demographics and get that search down to pull out the exact data that you need. Click on download records and, and you can download all that data to use in your email marketing or call center campaign or you know a postcard campaign or a mail campaign. 
All right, let's jump over to boat and yacht data. This is very similar to the last search. I'm going to select all the U.S. The geography demographics are all the same. And we'll get here to choose a boat make and model so I can choose a year. I can choose a make type of use. Commercial fishing vehicle, very interesting. A commercial passenger vehicle. Pleasure boats. The boat type. Cabin cruisers, canoes, and kayaks. Boy, that's one end of the spectrum to the other. Huh? Uh, sailboats. Propulsion. You know, inboard, inboard, outboard, outboard, jet, sail, steam, fuel types, diesel, gasoline, the, the length of the boat, the whole materials, you know, aluminum, concrete. Hmm. Do they, <laughs> do they make boats with concrete hulls? That's news to me. You know, inflatable steel wood, etc. So you can choose all of these demographics to, to hone in on the customer that's going to own the type of vehicle that you want to market to. You know, if you've got a product that you would sell to somebody that has a boat that's kept on a trail or that would that they would haul down to the water's edge. It might be very different than a boat that needs to be kept in a slip or kept moored all the time. And you're familiar with all of the other choices. Go ahead and do your record counts and download your data. Okay, let me move on. Motorcycles. Similar search again. We're going to search all of the United States. And here we can choose our vehicle make and model. Choose by year, choose by make. Here, let's look at let's look at Harley Davidsons for fun, and we'll look at all results. I can group the results by year. That's interesting. Doesn't matter if we have a VIN number or not. And we want to make sure that the record includes an email address because we're going to do some email marketing. Now, of course, you can target by income range, you can target by age, and, and all those other demographics that we've been talking about already, both men and women. And let's just do a record count for this. I want to see how much data there is. Wow, look at all that. So in, mo in motorcycle records in the United States, we've got 1.7 million uh, motorcycle owners that own Harley Davidsons that have valid email addresses. Now that's some valuable data. Do you think you might talk to a Harley Davidson owner a little bit differently than the rest of your marketing list? You bet you would and you'd get their attention and build a relationship very quickly because you have the same affinity. You would maybe talk about Harley Davidson or talk about motorcycles or talk about riding or have an image of a Harley Davidson in your, in your ad or in your landing page to get their attention. Now that's true target marketing. Download those records if you want them or download any part of that data and start email marketing to these niches because the riches are in the niches and the, the better job you do in defining your market and targeting your prospect, the easier it's going to be to convert them into leads and sales. Okay, the next list is the U.S. Voters Database. Now this one, geography is set up a little bit differently. You can select Democrats, Republicans, Independents, or Undecideds, or take all the voters, and you can choose them by U.S. Congressional District. So here's the entire country broken down into U.S. Congressional Districts. So you can choose your data that way, or you can pull them by city and state and zip code like we've discussed with the other databases. And that's it for this one. You can simply check your record count and download your data. Well, that wraps up our exploration of the specialty uh, marketing data lists. In the next video, we're going to cover the business to business marketing data all by itself. So if you're marketing to businesses, you're going to want to watch that video because there because there's lots of ways to target your perfect business. There's lots of demographics to choose from. And I'll show them all to you in just a minute. See you there.